Well, good morning, Grace Life. Welcome everybody to our online service this morning. I'm so glad, uh, I'm so glad to be with you today. Uh, it's the beginning of a new week. Uh, time to reset and to refocus our hearts and minds on God and his abundant goodness over our lives. You know, no matter how your week has been, no matter what struggles, what difficulties you've had this past week, uh, God's grace is available to you. Uh, the Bible says his mercies are new every morning. And so we come together around his grace today. Uh, today is an opportunity for us to hear from him in his word and also to respond in praise and in worship. He's the one that laid his life down for us and he deserves all of our worship today. And so we're so glad that you can join us. I'm Mike, I'm one of the pastors here and I wanna welcome to our, uh, to our service. Um, you know, one of the reasons we do it over Zoom is so that you guys can engage the service, we can see one another, and it's a way for us to have community even though we're separated. So I wanna encourage you, if you're able, uh, to please turn your videos on and go ahead and engage God's word, engage in worship with us today. Let me invite you to pray with me as we begin our service. Let's pray together. Father, we uh, thank you, God, for your grace. We thank you, God, for your goodness today. We thank you that your mercies are new every morning. Lord, thank you for your faithfulness over our lives, God. Lord, we come before you today. We lay it all down before you, God. All of our struggles, all of the, the difficulties and challenges we've had, Lord, it's the start of a new week. So help us to refocus our hearts and our, our attention once again upon you, upon your cross and your death and resurrection, the resurrection life that's available for us, God. And so we thank you, Lord. Uh, may we give you worship that's pleasing to you today. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's go ahead and worship the Lord together. Let's lift up our voices wherever God's placed us throughout the city. Uh, let's just begin to sing in our homes. Let's sing the song called A Friend of God, and it speaks of the amazing reality that the God of the universe would consider us friends, that he would actually have intimacy and friendship with us. So let's go ahead and, and worship him together. Well, amen. Uh, what a powerful truth that we were once enemies of God, but now he calls us a friend uh, through the cross of Jesus Christ, that we're reconciled to God and we can call upon him as father, as king, and as friend. It's a powerful truth. And every week we summarize the gospel, which is that reality which makes this friendship possible uh, through the Apostles' Creed. Uh, the Creed is perhaps the greatest summary of the gospel throughout the, the centuries of the church. And so we declare it every week in unison and in unity with believers all around the world uh, that this is the truth that we hold in common and the hope that we share. And so let's go ahead and it's going to be on your screens. Let's go ahead and declare it together as one church family. Let's begin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father, who will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And all God's people said, amen. Well, good morning, everybody. Good to see uh, many of you that uh, may have not been able to join us uh, for different reasons for work. And uh, we're just really glad that you could join us today. Uh, I'm Pastor Gene. I'm one of the pastors. If you're visiting us for the first time, we're glad that you could uh, spend this this time with us. Um, you know, if you're on social media, uh, I'm wondering if the amount of time that you that you spent scrolling through Instagram or Facebook has increased. Um, well, it has for me to the point where I, I've had to delete the apps off of my phone. It was just getting out of control. It was just ridiculous. And um, I think that's to be expected. Uh, while we're in isolation, we're, we're looking for connection to that outside world. And um, and so it's our portal to, to the outside world, isn't it? And connection with people is how, how God designed us. And due to the circumstances of this crisis, there have been many challenges and obstacles to build relationships and more specifically friendships. 
uh, I want to talk about a subject that's been a wake-up call for me. It's this biblical importance of friendships. It's an area that God finds very important, but I personally have dismissed it. I've dismissed this biblical importance that God stresses throughout scripture of friendships. And it's probably because of the pride I have inside, as we discussed last Sunday. I didn't think cultivating friendships was important or needed. But in studying this theme in Proverbs, it's, it's really opened my eyes um, that in order to live wisely, God speaks a lot about having friends, good friends. And um, I have to be honest, I'm not really sure if at the end of this talk, I could really uh, provide you with solutions. Um, but at the very least, uh, my, my hope and my prayer is that it will cause you to really reflect. And in fact, in this reflection process, it may be even very painful um, because it, it has been a painful journey for me. Uh, reflecting on this area because scripture has really exposed this area in my life. And, um, and let me start with this. If, if you look throughout scripture, you're going to notice a theme of friendship and it begins in Genesis one. It begins at the beginning because before creation, God existed before he created the heavens and the earth. God was, he existed. Um, some people wonder if God created man uh, because he was lonely or something like that, you know. Um, but that, that isn't true because before the world began, existed, God was in the Trinity. He had a perfect friendship within himself, within the Trinity of God, right? The Father had a relationship and friendship with the Son, the Son with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit with the Father. And so there's this perfect union. There's this perfect friendship. There's this perfect intimacy, and so God is just perfectly satisfied within himself. And so he doesn't need to, to create man. But he wanted to share this relationship with us. And so he made man. And, and throughout creation, we see God working. And everything is good, right? He made the land, and it was good. He made the plants and the seed, and it was good. He made animals, and it was good. And he made Adam, and it was very good. But there's only one thing throughout this story that God said, you know what, that's not good. He saw Adam, that Adam was alone. And he said, it is not good for, for man to be alone. And so he created Eve. And so we see the very first friendship. And the very first friendship happened to be a marriage. And so we see from the beginning, God's designed us for friendship. We're, we're made in the image of God, and therefore we're made for friendships. We're not called to live solitary lives disconnected from one another. Uh, we, we indeed are made for friendship. And, and that's why this quarantine is, is really difficult for, for so many of us because it, it, it provides a, a, an obstacle, a challenge for us to develop and um, just naturally engage in, in how God has designed us. But the reality is, if, if I were to be completely honest, I can only speak for myself, but I would say that um, many of us, including myself, I don't have many friends or we don't have many friends. Um, and, and I'll define what friends are soon, but, but how, why is that? How, how come we, we don't have many friends or as many as we would need or like? Well, the simple answer would be that sin ruined everything. Sin ruined our friendships, right? Sin separated, separated us from each other. Sin separated us from God. Um, and so, and people have sinned against us. And maybe you have uh, past experiences of betrayal or gossip or slander or mistrust or abuse. So there has kind of developed this, this callus or, or scabs, uh, if I may use that example, that there may be a fear of um, trust in people or a lack of um, safe people for us to enter into this biblical kind of friendship. I mean, we may know a lot of people, we may have acquaintances and coworkers, and, and we may not be alone. Uh, but how many true friends do, do we have? And, and this is not meant to shame or shame you or make you feel bad or about yourself, because this is a struggle for, for me too. And, and, and I, I always love to uh, compare my life to what scripture says. And, and I always find myself uh, falling short of that. And there's the gap is huge. And, 
And, and that's the point of us gathering together and, and worshiping together and hearing God's word is that there is a gap between our lives and the way that God has designed it. And, and uh, my goal and my hope always is to, to help someone try to bridge that gap if, if possible. And so um, this is not something that is um, uh, hidden. It's, this, is, this is true of, of many of us. Um, you know, and, and to continue this theme of, of friendship in, in Genesis 3, we see that God comes walking in, into the cool of the garden, right? And, and God walks with, with them. And walking is a metaphor for, for friendship. To, it's like to, to walk with somebody throughout life. And we continue through scripture and we see that Abraham was a friend of God and Moses saw God like a friend and David was a man after God's own heart. So we see friendship with God as a model or an example for us. And so when you begin to see this in scripture, you begin to realize, man, friendship is a pretty big deal in, in regards to how God designed our lives and just the way that we ought to live. Well, then if, if we know that, then okay, then how do, how do we get friends, you know? Well, I've thought about this and, you know, when, when we're babies, our parents choose our friends. We're friends with who our parents decide that they're going to have play dates with, right? We, we're friends with our parents' friends' kids and, and we didn't have a choice. We don't choose our friends. You know, our parents chose for us. But the thing is that it, that changes as we get older. We move into school age and, and as we move, become teenagers and, and soon we're going to have to choose our own friends. And remember Proverbs, the book of Proverbs is a father trying to instill wisdom to his son as a boy grows older, and he's going to need wisdom to choose his friends. Uh, I grew up in, in my childhood and adult life thinking or, or feeling, you know, I, I, I really don't need friends. I'm, I'm okay. I'm self-sufficient. Um, you know, friendships are overrated. I, I, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm okay. I don't need it. Um, and I, I grew up alone my whole life, and I'm not telling you this to ask for sympathy. I, I'm just saying this to give you some background of how I developed this distorted perspective about friendship, and also because I think there's probably more than two of you that can relate to my story. But, but I grew up uh, in a country suburb in, in Wisconsin as an only child with barely any neighbors, uh, barely any local kids my age around me in proximity. Um, of course, I went to school, and of course, I went to church. Uh, but for mo most of my life, I felt isolated. That's what I'm used to. But in, in recent years, and, and throughout you know, my adulthood, I, I began to really ponder this importance of friendship and, and uh, kind of had a desire to really develop it. And that's, that's how we came, came to this place in Proverbs, where the Proverbs begin to open my eyes to see, oh my goodness, what I thought was okay in not needing or depending or wanting or desiring friends was really not how God designed us to live. Um, and so our first uh, scripture verse that we're going to focus on this morning comes from Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24. And it says this, it says, one who has unreliable friends come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. There is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. In other words, there is a friend. There are friends that can be better than siblings. I know some of you are saying amen to that. Anybody could be better than my sibling right now. Come on, somebody. <laughs> um, but siblings are different from friends because friendships are a choice. Um, your friends have chosen you and they stick to you. Um, the word sticking to you like a brother is, 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 that, is a word like cleave. Uh, which means committed love. So friendships can bring something in your life that family cannot. Pastor Tim Keller points out that our culture elevates romantic relationships, right? You look at magazine covers and pop songs and movies. A lot of the focus that you'll see to sell magazines are, are about romantic love, right? You don't really see, you know, magazine covers of, of besties and BFFs and things like that, right? That's, you know, that won't sell magazines. And so our culture elevates romantic relationships. Um, con conservative, traditional culture will emphasize and elevate family, uh, parents and children and, and siblings. In a socialistic culture, uh, na a neighbor is out in front, right? We've got to serve our neighbor and things like that. 
And you'll notice that friendship always takes a back seat. And then he continues to point out that, you know, our families, our neighbors, our romances, they're, they're always going to be out front of us, right? Because our family is forced on you, and, but you need neighbors to, to network and have a job and things like that. And romance is, is a strong innate desire that we want anyway. But friendships, friendships which take an immense, uh, deliberate, intentional amount of work always get squeezed out of our incredibly busy life. Yet scripture tells us without good friends, you will not make it. You will not succeed. When we're children, it's, it's our family that, that shapes us, right? But after that, it's our friends that shape us. The teenage years are so crucial because our, our child's friends have more in influence than, than we do as parents. And that's no joke. I mean, that really needs to be one of the top priorities of, our, of, of prayers for, for parents. Right? Carol and I have been praying for our child in that way for a long time already. And we're going to continue to pray that he finds great friends, that he has great friends, until that prayer changes to, Lord, may he find a good woman to marry. Come on, somebody. You know? So that's, that's what we'll pray for. But we have to understand that friends determine the direction and quality of life. This whole series, we've been talking about how, how our path determines our destination. Our friends is going to determine the direction and the quality of life. Good kids make bad choices because of who their friends are many times. Um, you know, it, it's baffling to me, if you think about it, that teenagers will put more stock in the advice of another 14-year-old than the advice, advice of grown men and women, their parents, who would die for them at a moment's notice. But they do, because that's the power of friendship. If we look at Proverbs 13, 20, Solomon, who was the wisest person that ever lived, said, he who walks with the wise grow wise, but a companion of fools suffer harm. And so there's a promise and a warning uh, that's included in this verse. And the promise is that if you walk with friends, wise friends, you're going to grow wise. And the warning is that for, for those who associate with foolish friends, they're going to suffer harm. And so good friends are wise friends. Good friends know the difference between right and wrong. Good friends make good decisions. And it's, it's always going to be easier for teenagers to do the right thing when they're with the right people. But a fool, the Bible says, is someone who, who knows the difference between right and wrong, but chooses to do what is wrong. Fools simply don't care about doing right. In fact, fools are convinced that they're superior to others when they're successfully getting away with something, like ditching class or, um, you know, name, name your uh, teenage follies that, that we've been involved in. And so um, you need to understand that it's not always what you do that that causes you to get hurt. It's sometimes it's whom you're with and it's a companion of fools, not necessarily you being a fool yourself, but you will suffer harm based on who you have as your friends. Proverbs 12, 26 says this, the righteous choose their friends carefully. Uh, let's see, wait for it on the screen. The righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. You know, you can't choose your family, but you can choose your friends. If you show me your friends, we can see what your future may be. And, and Proverbs has a lot to say about building the right kinds of friendships. We're warned uh, against being friends with an angry man in Proverbs 22. We're told that wealth brings friends so that we know we got to be cautious with fake friendships. We're also warned against friends that you can't depend on, against friends who gossip, and when it comes to being a good friend, we're encouraged to be uh, friendly ourselves, to be sensitive to others and not to overstay our welcome. And so making friends is one thing, but maintaining friendship is another thing. Uh, author's lesson, Leslie Parrott in their book, Relationships, says that friends to die for have the following qualities, loyalty, forgiveness, honesty, dedication. Now, we're looking always for friends that have those qualities, but my question to to us is, do you have those qualities for other people? Um, 
the book of Proverbs tells us that when we perish, we perish because not for having a lack of friends, but having the wrong type of friends. Now, I know this sounds very junior high, and I know this sounds like high school, and believe me, I felt the same way. And now, as, as, as a 40-plus-year-old uh, adult male, um, this seems very silly to even talk about. But one of the reasons that, that as we grow older is that because we get hardened in our ways and we get stubborn, and, and one of the reasons why we don't maybe have as many friends is, number one, maybe the season of life. But also number two, what I want us to examine on a, on a personal level is that maybe we're not a good friend ourselves. We're not good friends to others because what is required to be a good friend is actually pretty hard, right? Because friends are, are, are transparent with each other. They're vulnerable with each other. They're committed to each other in a culture where we live in a commitment phobia society. And so my question to, to you, to us is, can you give that to other people? Can you give your transparency? Can you give vulnerability? Can you give commitment to someone else? And that's hard. And maybe the answer is, no, I'm not comfortable with that. And so we, we don't have strong friendships because what is required to be a friend ourselves is so difficult. Proverbs 18, 24 from the New King James Version says this, it says, a friend, um, a man who has friends must himself be friendly. And so what I want to encourage us as, as a church, even though we're not meeting in a building, but as a church, as a people of God, is that the church should be where people come to see what true friendship looks like. Can a brother get an amen? The church should be a place where people can see the examples of what friendship looks like. Because people feel so alone, feel so isolated, feel so insecure. And maybe that's even you. Maybe that's even me. That this is how we're living our lives. And we've dismissed the idea, well, you know what? I don't need friends. Well, Proverbs makes it very clear. You cannot live a wise life unless you choose and keep good friendships. You know, uh, like I said, I think, you know, I've struggled with this, but friendship always seems to take a back seat to more important matters, right? Uh, I'm just too busy with family and job and, and other things to, to invest in meaningful friendships. And somewhere along the way, I, I've learned um, to just, just power through without, without them. Um, now, if you're in middle school, friendship is like a life or death situation. But if you're an adult, Friendship just feels like a luxury item, doesn't it? I mean, yeah, if I can, you know, develop some friendship, great. But I mean, it just seems like a luxury. And yes, it'd be nice to have a good few friends, but it's really not that important in my stage of life. Can I tell you, scripture shows us that that's, that's really a foolish way to live. That friendship is not a nice bonus in our life. It's one of the most fundamental aspects of humanity of our humanity. I mean, uh, like I said, you, you, have, you can view the entire Bible through the lens uh, of friendship. And, and when God created Adam, he, he heard the ache that was in the heart of Adam. And, and when he woke up to a literally perfect world, he noticed that there was still something missing in a perfect world. And, and that his, his, his heart, his makeup burned for companionship. And no matter how much I want to deny it, no matter how much you want to deny it, we yearn for, for that too, because it's a part of our humanity. Well, quickly, I just want to go into just uh, what are the qualities of, of a biblical friend, right? Because uh, like I said, if, if, if you're in, engaged in, in a group of friends, they, they determine your direction and they can lead you either away from God, towards God, uh, away from uh, righteousness, towards righteousness. Um, and so just a f there's a lot of characteristics, but just to go quickly, just to maybe help you um, examine your, 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 your friendships or your search for, for meaningful friendships. Number one, uh, friends are compassionate. Uh, let's look at Proverbs 17:17. 17, 17. It says, a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. 
what a, what a beautiful sentence. What a beautiful verse, right? A friend loves at all times. I mean, if you have a brother or sister, they inherited a relationship with you. They didn't choose you. You share the same blood. So when your life falls apart, you know, they're going to be there for you. It's, it's part of their job description. Uh, but a friend, a true friend who doesn't have a biological connection to you, they're not legally bound to show up. They just do it because of a genuine love for you. And they don't just show up on uh, hard days. They show up uh, at all times. They, they laugh with you. They cry with you. They sit for you for four hours on a road trip and not say a word. And it, it's okay. Next, friends are, are candid. Um, they, they're, they're open to you. They're open to uh, what you need. They're, they're able to, to say things to you um, very candidly. And they, they will say hard things in love. Let's look at Proverbs 27. Verse five and six. It says, better is open rebuke than hidden love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Profuse are the kisses of an enemy. You know, maybe your best friend is a person who's able to tell you in love an open rebuke. And uh, notice how it says, faithful are the wounds of a friend. Uh, most of us live exactly opposite. Faithful are the kisses of a friend, but abundant are the wounds of an enemy. But I think Solomon got it right. Um, Oscar Wilde uh, said that true friends stab you in the front and not in the back. Um, also, friends shape you. Uh, Proverbs twenty-seven seventeen says, iron sharpens iron as one man sharpens another. And so when friends get together, they, they, they shape uh, one another. Um, I mean, personally, I, I would love to have friends who, who make me sharper and better. But unfortunately, when you get shaped, it hurts. It hurts a lot. And so good friends provide each other a safe place to discuss life and struggles, you know. Um, but shaping doesn't only happen through discussion. So it doesn't only happen through words. Shaping happens through life together. And so as you watch me, as you watch your friends, we sharpen each other. We become better by, by living together, living life together as friends. The Hebrew word for friends is closer re related to the word for secret. So someone who you can share your secrets to. John chapter 15, Jesus says this. He says, I no longer call you servants, but I call you friends. That's a powerful uh, declaration that Jesus gives us. He says, I no longer call you servants. And I call you friends. And then he continues with what will define what he considers a friend. And he says that you are my friends because I'm letting you know everything about me. Everything I know about God and the kingdom of, my, of God, I'm revealing everything to you, my heart, my soul. And so he's saying the definition of friend is that I'm letting you know everything about me. I'm wanting to be known to you. C.S. Lewis said, um, that friendship is born at the moment that one man says to another, what, you too? I thought that no one but myself. And so friendship is born when there's a commonality. Um, the two most powerful words to be a catalyst for building friendship is this, me too. And this is way before the hashtag me too movement took its identity, but me too is a powerful phrase. It's like, you like camping? Me too. You like football? Me too. You like cooking? I like eating. So me too. <laughs> and so there's this common area of interest that be builds a, and begins a friendship that begins with these words. Wow, me too. But that phrase is also powerful in, in areas of suffering and pain. It's like, wow, you have a teenage daughter? <sighs> me too. <laughs> you went through surgery for that? Me too. You feel alone? Me too. Your boss is frustrating? Me too. And so the two most powerful words that, that anyone can hear, more powerful than a lengthy sermon about, about friends, is two words. Me too. So when you're questioning things, when you're, when you're crying, when there's nothing that seems to, to, to be able to heal you, and there's nothing, there's nothing more comforting than hearing someone say, I know what you're going through. I'm in it with you. Me too. 
Author Pete Wilson says, don't allow your pain as deep as it might be to keep you from fully, fully embracing the gift of community. Don't let your disappointment, as devastating as it might be, keep you from hearing or saying, me too. It's a risk to be vulnerable and open, but allowing someone to say, me too, or for you by sharing your pain and by you saying someone through your pain, me too, brings incredible healing to people in this journey. Think about the hardest situation that you're going through. Maybe you're going through it with right now. Maybe it's some sort of illness. Maybe it's some sort of stress. One of the most healing things that you can receive is someone coming alongside of you saying, you know what? Me too. Jesus gives us the ultimate example of friendships, right? Jesus had friends. He had crowds. He had 12 disciples. He had three men in his inner circle. And if you think about it, if Jesus in his humanity needed friends, how much more do we need friends? How much more do I need friends? The Native uh, Indians had a, uh, Native Americans had a word for friend that meant, uh, he who carries my sorrow on his back. That a friend is he who carries my sorrow on his back. And in fact, that's exactly what Jesus did for us. Jesus, who is a friend of sinners, said that there's greater love, there's greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. And he says, you are my friends. If you do whatever I command you, no longer do I call you servants, for a servant doesn't know what his master is doing, but I have called you friend. Jesus was the ultimate friend. He, in fact, forsook his relationship with God so that we could have a friendship with God. He laid it all down, his, his friendship with God, so that we could have that. And the best picture of friendship we can see is how Jesus loves us. Jesus is not a fair weather friend. He's one who loves us at all times until the very end. You know, and at the end of Jesus's life, he wanted to show how much he loved his disciples. So he explained to them what true friendship was, that he would lay down his life for his friends. But watch this. Jesus allowed the disciples inner access to his life. That's amazing. That's amazing to me that Jesus would allow access to his inner life and to who he was. That's such a difficult thing for, for many of us to allow people in uh, because we've been hurt before, because um, there's been mistrust and betrayal. There's so many reasons. There's trauma. There, that, that, that is so amazing to me. And in fact, Jesus is a friend of sinners that, that he lays down his life for, for those who sin against him. And he's our friend, but are we his? The Bible says that we're in our general state, we're not a friend of God. We, we're a friend of the world. And in James 4, I think we have the scripture. James 4 says this, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. And unfortunately, we are friends with the world. And so that, that disqualifies us from being friends with, with God. And so, um, you know, just as many of us are, are afraid of having uh, friends who will not stick it through with us when things go hard, Jesus, he in fact have that same experience. You know, many who claim to be friends with Jesus, they, they deserted him, they left him. And, um, and so he, uh, he just lays down his life so that we could walk with him and uh, become wise. Um, and he invites you, he invites me, he invites us to walk with him. He invites us to choose wisdom in living this life. And part of that is, is having friends, but not only friends, but he invites us to be friends with him. That ultimately, above anything else, he invites you to be friends with him. And through friendship with people, you can find hope. Through friendship with people, you can find help. You can find love. You can find comfort. And if you see that all of these things are characteristics of Christ in your friends, in you, because we're made in the image of God. And so we see through friendships, we can see Christ because these are characteristics of God, hope, healing, love, comfort. 
this morning as I come to a close, I, I know that, that we are people filled uh, with loneliness and isolation. And I know that God has created us uh, to be in relationship, but because of different circumstances, uh, the pandemic being one big reason, it's been really challenging and it's, it's actually uh, magnified our isolation and magnified our loneliness and magnified and we are struggling. And Jesus, he calls you to come be friends with him. And uh, I want to encourage you, we, we are going to try our best in the next coming weeks and months um, to invite you along this journey of friendship. Uh, the way that I see it is that uh, because we're in this holding pattern, that we can start from, uh, from the ground up. We can start from scratch. And one of the foundational pillars that, that we need as a church, as a people to do, is to build that foundation of friendship and relationship. Ultimately, we need to be where the world looks at what friendship looks like through us. And this is going to be an intentional, it's going to be a deliberate, it's going to be a challenging process, um, but I think it's going to allow us to live life to its fullest, that we will find freedom and we'll find peace and we'll find Christ through our friendships for one another. And so let me encourage you that um, as we set up the structure um, to invite you into relationship with others, to take advantage of it. Uh, don't, don't be foolish like me thinking that it's not important and uh, it's, it's okay to disregard this, but, but the Lord really designed it so that we are in friendships. I know you're feeling it. I'm feeling it. We're all feeling it. And so now maybe God is opening our eyes and exposing us to, to these biblical concepts of how much we really need each other. And, uh, and you, you have permission to initiate those things. Uh, but my prayer for us is that First of all, that we would see that God created us for relationship and friendship. And may we be that for one another. So let's pray together. Can I invite you right now just to, to spend some time just reflecting and just seeking the Lord? Um, and maybe you're like me and you, you just need to ask the Lord, God, uh, would you open doors for relationship and friendships? Maybe you need to thank the Lord for uh, for the friendships that you have. Just so thankful that God has provided uh, those friends who, who can lift you up in times of, of trouble, who can strengthen you, who can provide comfort and hope. If that's the case, let's praise him for that. Let's thank him for that. So can we spend a moment doing that this morning as we worship? Father, help us to see, God, that you are our ultimate friend, that you are a true friend, that you um, are the one that is always there for us, God, when we have no one to turn to, that we can turn to you, God, for you have provided so much grace and blessings, Lord, and God, we're thankful for that. Uh, Lord, we pray, God, that you would um, allow us to develop and, and build uh, friendships and relationships uh, within this body within uh, your, your church. And God, we pray that uh, there would be a commonality of Christ in our lives, God, that, that we would be a people who want to uh, seek you together, that we want to grow in our faith with you together, Father. And uh, Lord, help us not to disregard this area. Help us to continue to work on this area, God, by your grace and by your Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray for those who feel isolated and alone, God, that they would know that they have friendship with you, God, that you would uh, be so real in their vision that uh, that you would be close to their heart right now, Lord, and that you would speak to them uh, uh, daily, Father. So, Lord, we just thank you uh, for 
uh, your word. And we thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, let's respond and let's uh, sing this traditional hymn, uh, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, to remind us that he is truly the greatest example of a friend and that he is our great friend. Well, thank you, Pastor Gene, for that great message on Jesus's friendship with us and how important it is to cultivate and develop friendships uh, here in the community of faith. And uh, we hope you would do that. And um, we want also other people to experience friendship with Christ. And one of the ways we do that is by giving generously uh, to the work of the kingdom. And so we want to uh, create a space and an opportunity for you now to go ahead and do that. And uh, just to give, uh, to give sacrificially, to give generously. Uh, there's a few ways that you can do that. Uh, you can give through our website, cgracelife.com slash give. You can give through our church center mobile app, or you can simply text 84321, uh, and it's that easy. You can uh, set up and, and give uh, to the work of the gospel here in our valley, in our city, uh, so more people can experience the type of friendships that the Bible talks about, especially friendship with Jesus. Uh, so let's give some space now in the service for you to go ahead and give, and I'll bring us back together and we'll pray and uh, pray over our tithes and offerings. Me, uh, bring us back together and let's pray uh, together. Father, thank you, Lord, for your abundant provision, God. You supply all of our needs. You supply the friends we need. You supply your son. And God, we just want to come before you and we take these tithes and offerings, God, and we give them to you. Lord, there are people there out in our world that need community, that need friendship, that need Christ. And so we pray that Lord, uh, you would use these resources so that more people can have salvation in him and to have a hope uh, for their lives, God. And so we thank you, God, and we pray these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, before we close our service, uh, I want to just go over a few important announcements uh, with you uh, today. Uh, the first is, if you're a guest, we are just so pleased that you could join us today. We hope you were blessed. We hope you're encouraged. We hope you learned something today in God's word. Uh, one of the ways that we can better serve you as a ministry is uh, simply by getting you updates and newsletters, important information about what's happening at Grace Life. And so in order to do that, just text new to the number on your screen. Uh, it'll ask for a few uh, basic pieces of contact information. Promise not to spam you, but simply uh, get you resources to help equip you in your faith journey. Uh, if you have not been getting updates from us recently and you've been a part of Grace Life for a while, uh, it could be we need to update your information. And so if that's the case, uh, do us a favor and go ahead and text new to that same number. Also, we want to pray for you, uh, Pastor Eugene and I, as well as uh, a team of people that would love to pray and intercede. Um, we would love to offer up prayers to God on your behalf. And so text pray to that number uh, if you have a prayer request. Uh, during this season, we've been separated, but prayer is a lifeline. Prayer is one of the ways that we can minister to each other. And so go ahead and text pray. Uh, during the week, you can uh, simply go on our website. There's also a link for prayer requests. And that's a, a great way as well. People have been finding to submit their prayer requests to us. And God's been answering. God's been faithful. And so we want to keep praying for you. Uh, speaking of prayer, uh, on Saturdays, we have our corporate prayer gathering, 714 prayer meeting. And that's every Saturday morning. I want to invite you to, to join us for that. Um, you don't need to have been before. Uh, every Saturday is a, a new meeting, a fresh meeting. Uh, we're going through the Psalms together. And uh, it's just encouraging. And it's a good time of fellowship. And more than that, it's just a great way to grow in your prayer life. 
and we invite you to, to join us this coming Saturday. Uh, also, I want to just highlight again, um, we've got a Grace Life podcast, and so uh, you can get it on uh, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Overcast, uh, wherever you get your podcasts, you can find us. Just type in CE uh, space Grace Life, and you could uh, download our podcasts. Um, miss a, if you miss a sermon, you can catch up on a sermon, or if you feel like uh, a sermon would be a great uh, addition to your friend's life this week, you can send them the podcast. Uh, we just want to equip you. And so go ahead and find us there or as well as on your Church Center app. You can find our podcast there. Uh, if you don't have Church Center, we encourage you to download that as well. And uh, just a reminder for the young adults, uh, our Life Together uh, study, we're not meeting this week. We're taking a break, uh, but we'll be gathering back together our usual times next Sunday. And so God bless you guys. Have a great week. Let me uh, pass it back over to Pastor Eugene for our benediction. All right. Thanks, uh, Pastor Mike. Yeah, our, our Sun 14 meetings have been kind of a catalyst for people to build new friendships. And so it's been great in that way, how God kind of brought that group together. And uh, we invite you to come join us and, and pray on, on Saturday mornings. Uh, but also, I want to encourage you, for those of you who really feel uh, isolated and discouraged, um, to consider reaching out and being a friend to someone else and see see how that affects and changes kind of the direction in, uh, of of your life. Uh, you never know uh, by reaching out and being a friend for somebody, uh, you may become friends in that way. And, uh, you know, maybe you even end up, if you're single, marrying that person, you know, who knows? I mean, hey, that's, that's all in God's hands. But, um, but uh, you know, I, as we close, I, I just feel blessed um, that I can call, call all of you friends and um, just really appreciate, um, you know, just how, how strong you guys have been. I know that it's been very tough for many of you. Um, and so uh, you're not alone. Don't, you know, please reach out to somebody, um, you know, and let us know um, that, you know, that you, you like relationship and you need, you need some, uh, someone to talk to or something like that. So uh, I want to bless you and encourage you. So let me uh, bless you with a benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and love of our Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with those who desire to have strong connections and relationship and friendship in the body of Christ. Lord, we pray that you would provide that for, for all during this difficult time. May we bless all of us who are friends with God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a, a great week. Encourage you to stick around a little bit if you want to just chit-chat and catch up and, and uh, get to know some people. But uh, otherwise, uh, you're free to go, and God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday.